I'm Stephanie, the Adult Programming Coordinator here at Pickens County System. Um, and Beth is in here with me. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're going to talk about where'd you go, Bernadette, and we brought on some other people from around the county. So I'll let them introduce themselves as I bring them on. Hi, I'm Carolyn. I work at Easily Circulation. Hello, I'm Mary Francis. I work at the Liberty Library. Hi, I'm Margaret. I'm at the Pickens Branch. Well, so <laughs> this is our first time doing it live like this with so many people in discussing in different places. So uh, bear with us, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section, or if you want to participate in the discussion, please do. Um, all you have to do is type it in there and we'll get to it. Um, and we can discuss the book and what we got planning for the rest of the uh, Book Watchers Club. Um, and just to kind of start it off, we are going to be discussing the book. So if you haven't read it, some plot points might be brought up because <laughs> it's kind of hard not to without that. Um, but the book is about a woman named Bernadette Fox and her journey to, <laughs> to um, I don't know, find herself again is kind of what it ends up being. But she, she actually goes missing and uh, it's written as her. It's an epistolary novel. Go. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew that's, that's what you were looking for. That's exactly what I was looking at. Um, and I keep turning behind me because Beth is actually sitting behind me. So if I do something weird like that, it's <laughs> around my corner. Uh, but at its core, it's about a woman who disappears, both literally and figuratively. Were y'all able to relate to this book? Yeah, I think there's times in your life where you go through kind of losing your passion or you get burnt out or, or hurt and you can't uh, even do the things that you like to do anymore. I think that's very relatable. <laughs> 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 yeah, I felt bad for her. Yes, <laughs> me too. Uh, uh, Beth might have felt <laughs> slightly different. Sometimes. Well, I didn't relate to her like at all um, because the life experience is so different. Mm -hmm. But Mary Frances, I think you're right. I think <laughs> I could relate to the idea of losing passion. She has a very kind of different person. So yeah. I, I could get that, like it's hard to to get on her wavelength. Yes. Well, too, too, she created such a masterpiece in her mind with that design and then to have someone demolish it, you know, so. Well, she's that, on vacation. I'm sorry to hear you. I was like, like, while she was on vacation, it was demolished while she was vacation. Yes. Like, I mean, she's she that's just nothing. Traumatic, you know, she spent all this effort to make sure she stayed in that 20 mile radius and did all this diligent work, and then poof, it's gone like building a sandcastle, you know, and here comes the wave. So, yeah, that's a great example. <laughs> <laughs> That would be very, it, it, it would be heartbreaking. And it felt like it was also like, um, when you do find out that she had miscarriages, that it's kind of like her first baby that was ripped away from her. <laughs> you know? Um, and so I can imagine how that would just really torment you. Um, uh, let's see. It's, it's told from the point of view of her daughter trying to find her mother. Why do you think the author chose to do it from B's point of view? Um, and what light does that shed on it between the book, between the relationship between the two of them? Someone's going to say something. I don't want to. 
cut anybody off. Go ahead. Um, I, I was just going to say that having her daughter tell the story makes it a little bit more partial because I didn't think anybody in this book was likable and everybody is confused and coming from their own lens. And it seems like B was the only character with all of the information. I made it kind of more mysterious too, like from a child's point of view, like she doesn't maybe understand everything that's going on. Although she is kind of older and she a middle schooler. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I think she's like 14. But it does, yeah. She does through so much that she's kind of an older 14. Yes. Yeah. Like there are some right. 14 year olds that I would not trust with any of this information. <laughs> <laughs> well, and even a mature 14 year old is, isn't necessarily going to understand the level of mental illness right. that Bernadette is functioning at. Yeah. Um, and only because you did say that, I have it way further back. But so do you think Bernadette was actually crazy? Do you think, or do you think it's just that she had too much and she really just needed to regroup? I mean, I, I feel like there was some mental illness involved in that the depression had just taken over her life, you know? Um, what did y'all think? Hey, Caroline. Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, <laughs> uh, when Bernadette escaped from the intervention, intervention she asked Audrey to send all the emails to B, and she said, I know it's a lot, but she can handle. I'd rather ruin her with truth than ruin her with lies. What did y'all think about her sending something so, I mean, that was a lot of material <laughs> to send to your 14 year old. Yeah, they almost don't have like a, a typical parent-child relationship. They're more best friends. And I cannot only say that just with the uh, health issues that B had growing up, I can see why that would make them even more bonded, even than any other. These medical issues can definitely bring people together, or as they said, bring her and her husband apart. But also, what does it say about her relationship with her husband that she wouldn't confide in? him at all. Yeah, it's like they're codependent, the daughter and the mother, yes. too much. Maybe. <laughs> but I feel like he let that happen. Like, you know. He's not particularly he, present. Right. He kind of was like, I will be, or, you know, Bernadette's taking care of B. I'm going to work. And I mean, I know he had a big job and a lot on his plate, and he had to afford them this life, but he also really dropped the ball in my opinion. Well, I think gender dynamics really played a role in the novel, especially because Bernadette is an architect and that's a male dominated field. So choosing to place her in a male dominated field where she falls to the bottom and then is struggling with her husband who is also in a male dominated field really brought in gender politics in a way that I maybe wasn't originally expecting. Anyone else? Um, <laughs> Caroline's just not connecting with us today. Um, <laughs> she's trying. She she's trying her damn. Um. <laughs> uh, Paul. Uh, Jelak. What was his last name? Jelinek. Jelinek. He brought up the point that Bernadette only created two houses and both were for herself. Do you think she could have had a career in architecture with actual clients? Can you repeat that, Stephanie? Uh, I kind of, I uh, missed part of, of what you said, sorry. Uh, Paul brought up the point that Bernadette only created two houses and both were for herself. Do you think she could have had a career in architecture with actual clients? 
I don't think she could have. I think it was always her vision and, and nobody else's. That would be really hard. I agree. I didn't think of Bernadette so much as an, uh, an architect as I did as an artist. And I think mm -hmm. that she wanted to make art in the houses. She wasn't creating something for someone to live in. She was creating something for them to experience. And but she was very diligent about the functionality of things. Yeah, I just don't think that I she think could that, work with someone. Right, I, the collaboration aspect would not <laughs> be there. No. But, but then at the end, she's working on the project um, in Antarctica. Um, I forget whatever that project was that she yeah. got herself entwined in. So I think she was at the end trying to change because she is passionate about the design in that field. So it's interesting, Margaret. I didn't think about that. Yeah, she has some growth as a person at the end there. I did yeah. not think so. <laughs> <laughs> I get kind of the movie and the book a little mixed up and I think the movie she's more likable so you yes. might be thinking more of the movie I feel like she was so watered down in the movie I yes mean, like everybody was and her husband was made to be like oh he's trying that's not <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. in the book. that's not the impression I got what do y'all think why was he so convinced that she needed to be committed I mean like that's I felt like the psychiatrist was right. That's not the next step. <laughs> not the next step isn't, hey, you have a problem, committed. But you might think it were if you didn't know your spouse like at all. And you were just like, maybe they're nuts. But he had been living with her for years. I mean, it's not like her. Yes, yeah, some things spun it out of control. But overall, she was operating as she had been for 20 years. I mean, like, it's, she was permitted in her house with her daughter, doing the things she liked and not doing anything else. So what changed for him that made it seem like... Is I guess, the, I guess um, having that billboard placed in their... Uh, um, yard might have set them off saying that's a little bit over the top. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I guess I just felt like you can live with someone and not know them. So they're at a point where they're roommates, not spouse. So it's like he doesn't really know and he's been spending the last 20 years thinking my roommate sure is weird. <laughs> what? what did y'all think honestly about the billboard? And for those of you that don't know, she had an eight by five foot billboard put at the back of her house said that Nats, the private property, Nats will be arrested and sent to Nat jail. I don't know. It's kind of funny. It's like if you if you could do that, you know, you kind of want to do things like that sometimes. You yeah. want to. You, you want to. Yeah. But you shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know you shouldn't, but you kind of want to. Yes. I think I was more put off by the fact that she has enough money to do that <laughs> and be like, cool. Like spend thousands no. of dollars on us. Exactly. I was like, yes but no one has this kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really do. <laughs> I mean, when she does. And that's what made me feel disconnected from the character. See, I saw it as, you know, the late night Amazon purchase. Like, <laughs> sometimes you're like, I didn't need to do that. That was the wrong decision. But you might have had a glass of wine. Order Start ordering weird stuff. 14 and you're like, skincare products. I mean, like, I've got a, I've got a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have. They're just <laughs> stupid. Like, if it's tech or organizational, I bought it. But was it $4,000 worth of billboard? 
No. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> no. But I could see me wanting to. And I did think it was funny that she called them that. And to be fair, when she post mud slide, <laughs> she did let that lady do what she wanted. So I mean, it was totally Audrey's fault. Is the mud slide her fault? No. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't think so either. You don't think it's a yeah. little bit her fault? No. She knew. <laughs> she, she knew tried. that if Audrey she tried to tell her. Guns, it would happen, and she, she didn't stop till it was done. I mean, Audrey was not going to stop. I guess that's yeah. Yeah. Like She broke onto her property. Yeah, that was <laughs> truly unfortunate. <laughs> to do to possibly get it done without her permission. <laughs> so she was going to get it done. I guess that's fair. You did it to yourself. Mm. I mean, I think. <laughs> <laughs> However, I did like, um, uh, why did it just sleep on my As Audrey. Oh, uh, <laughs> not why, Kira why Sedgwick. No. No. Kira um, Sedgwick is the closer. No, that's not right. Kristen Wiig. <laughs> that's, <it. laughs> that's who it was. Those are two totally different. Those are very different people. <laughs> Look, it's been a long day. <laughs> um. What did y'all think of Audrey's arc as her friend or as her nemesis and savior kind of at the end? I, I don't like her either. Nice. You know, yeah, she's <laughs> she's very unlikable too. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everyone. <laughs> like, that's the problem. <laughs> well. I, I like that she actually learned. Yeah. It gave me hope that people could change. Like you are finally confronted with the crappy things you've done. And all of a sudden you go, oh, that was my fault. Oh, that was totally my fault. It was not her fault. She should not be going to an insane asylum because of what I did. I mean, and then she did try to save her. I guess there's just a part of me that's like, you had to get that bad for you to realize you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she's in her own little bubble. Her bubble of believing that she was awesome. Her world was awesome. Yeah. Her son was great. Her dad, her husband, her, not her dad. <laughs> her husband wasn't an alcoholic. So, I mean, I think that it's just flawed people, you know. Which everyone is, yeah. and maybe that's supposed to be the appeal here. Here, maybe <laughs> didn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they made people flawed, and then in the movie they made them better. Yeah. Yes, that made me angry because I was like, you took the worst characters. And made them good, and I don't want that. Yeah, they really changed it, <laughs> and they really shortened how long she was missing for. Yes, <laughs> it's like she was only gone for like three days. Kind of seems like. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, she was gone for weeks. <laughs> yeah, like weeks, they thought she was weeks. dead. Like it was mid January. <laughs> And then, like in the movie, they're like, "Oh, she remember yesterday today. when Bernadette went to Antarctica? Yeah." Oh, and I had mentioned this to Beth earlier, but I didn't like that the movie started out with the ending of the book. <laughs> like it started out knowing she was in Africa, Antarctic, Africa. <laughs> I don't talk about Antarctica so much. <laughs> so we're just not going to talk about all of Africa so much either, but what the Antarctica. But I mean, it is, she was there. They said the, the quote about, or not the quote, but the, the phrase about you stop noticing things 
and it, you know you don't appreciate as much and that's like how the book ended but that's how the movie started so i kind of felt like what's the point we know we know where she is she's in and out of our okay. well when we chose this, I felt like it was marketed as a mystery, and that is not what I got when I read it. So, what about anybody else? Did y'all think it was a mystery? No. Uh, no. Kind of. I don't know. It kind of reminds me. I'm trying to think of what it's similar to, like some kind of play where everyone's got really terrible <laughs> problems. <laughs> like a, like, you know, kind of like a Shakespearean play or something. Like I, I wouldn't. There's lots of little, you know, humor in it, but I wouldn't say I think of it like a mystery. It's kind of more psychological or something. Did everyone here read it or did anyone listen to the audiobook? I listened to the audiobook. How was that different? I liked it because to me it was more of a comedy than a mystery. <laughs> I mean, I could just picture her getting the um, best in the mail with all those pockets, you know, so she was prepared to travel, you know, she needed a pocket for her passport, you know, and all this stuff. So, I mean, it was comical to me, not such a thriller or mystery type thing. So. And Caroline, made me want one. Caroline mentioned the same thing. Yeah. She listened to the audiobook and she said it was funnier, but I didn't think the book was particularly funny maybe yeah, because I, I read it i felt bad i saw <laughs> mental illness being mocked and not treated accordingly with respect to deserves <laughs> that's what my mind <laughs> well i mean she had trust in her uh, personal assistant to uh, take care of <laughs> Yeah. Whatever she needed, so. Okay, and they and did. They did get her all that stuff. They they followed through with everything they said they were going to do. I mean, yeah, they might have taken more money, but they did. I would really love if someone mailed everything I need to my house. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> um, Cassie says that. Um, She listened to the audio book too, and she loved the narrator. Oh! She said it was Liz Danes. I didn't know it was Liz. That makes oh. Sense. Okay. Gonna have to listen to it. I know, now I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> and Cassie also said it was definitely more comical than the. Uh, uh, Let's get back. Where are, where are my questions? Let's see. Um, what did you think of Paul, the Ar Arctic guy, friend, confidant? Um, are you done? You can't honestly believe any of this nonsense. People like you must create. If you don't create, you become a menace to society. I thought that was perfect. It was obviously what it needed to get her back on path. That is really less of a question than I thought it was when I looked at it. <laughs> Any thoughts on that? <laughs> I liked that guy. <laughs> no, he wasn't even in it much. Maybe that's why you liked him. I liked Paul. He was one of my favorite people. <laughs> I honestly don't remember Paul. <laughs> but it's been a while since I read the book. Paul was played by Lawrence Fishburne in the movie. Yes. yes. That's what I remember. Um, uh, let's see. Um, oh, what did, what did y'all think of VAV, the Victims Against Victimhood? <laughs> Which wasn't in the movie at all. No, it was one of the things they took out, and it was also one of the things that I thought was funny. <laughs> so funny because of how terrible it was, or why do you think it was funny? I guess because 
that was the moment where I was like, okay, satire, it makes sense. Okay. But the whole book is marketed as a satire. And I don't know that it overall felt successful for me. Did it throw anybody off that it was um, epistolary format? That it was going back through so many different people with B as the only common moderator. Yeah, I remember when I read it, I thought it was kind of confusing at times because of that. Yeah. Margaret, was it hard to keep up in the audiobook? Yeah, I mean, it did jump around, but um, since it was such a great narrator, I mean, you felt like you were, you know, part of the, the scene. Like I said, when the whole vest thing, you, I mean, you could just picture everything because it was very um, animated in the, just, you know, the reading of it, so. See, it makes all the difference. Who does it? Like yeah. How it's presented to you. Um, what did y'all think of Bernadette and Elgin's marriage? Is it dysfunctional? Was there a love? Um, how terrible, and did you not believe the ending of the movie where they're like, they're going to live happily ever after? <laughs> Yeah, that was very different. Like, I didn't expect the happy ending like that. Maybe. <laughs> it really changed it around. I mean, it's like I, I, I see how they fell apart, and but I don't see how they're gonna really get back together. I mean, and they did leave out that he has a baby mama now too. And leaving those things out sort of makes Bernadette seem worse because it's like, oh, well, her husband didn't have an affair. There's no child. What's she so upset about? But when you have all of that, in addition to her other problems, it makes more sense that she would have a breakdown. And to be honest, Bernadette still didn't know there was a baby. I mean, like, and it, when they found her in Antarctica, she still didn't know about that part. She just assumed they were sleeping together. Oh. I mean, or like it hadn't come out yet. Right? Am I wrong? No, I think that's right. I think. So I think that will definitely be a revelation for her. <laughs> <laughs> and then you bought her a house. Sounds like a fancy house. Yes. Probably a crafts, well, which I, mean, I actually love. It's a lot of money. He can. He can. I mean, number four, TED Talk. Oh. <laughs> what did you guys think about the TED Talk? Did it resonate with you in any way? No? I mean, like, it was cool. But I, I, I guess I don't watch the talks, so. You know what it made me think of is Wally, -E, the Disney movie, because everybody's in those chairs and they, like, do anything. And I was like, oh, okay, he just wants to live in the Wally -E future. Oh. And I was wrong. Cassie said she did find out of a baby. Oh, okay and was very understated reaction to it. Well, good for her. I would not. That would not be me. Because that was Wally. That song was in your mind. Yeah, that was it. I was like, oh, he just wants to create the Wally future. And it's not great. <laughs> but I think that I think that was just part of his job being um, designing the Samantha 2 with his Microsoft job or whatever. I think they just sort of had some filler in there um, to give us some more background of his character and what he did. Right. And I think it's important for how Sue Lynn sees him 
because that TED talk figures into this imagined version of him. Mm -hmm. um, did you find, oh wait, would you, this is a, would you recommend this book? Would you recommend this movie? Would you recommend the book? <laughs> I would recommend the audio. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be a good book to suggest to somebody going on a trip. Are you going on a road trip? The audio book is good. I thought it was easy to read and I read it quickly. And I think it would be good for like going to the beach. Um, but as far as like, I love this. No. Yeah. I didn't know. I agree. I enjoyed it, but didn't love it. And I was surprised that I liked the movie as much as I did. I thought it was, oh, you it did? was pretty good. Yeah. I was yeah. bored. With it the was movie. very slow. It took very, a while. Very slow. And I was like waiting for stuff to happen and it didn't. So. And they really truncated all the FBI stuff. But yes. yeah, I'll watch anything with Kate Blanchett in it. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. I would watch it for her. <laughs> yeah, I think if she wasn't in that movie, it it would have been terrible. She carried the whole movie. And ironically, Cassie completely disagrees. She did <laughs> not watch the movie because she did not think Kate Blanchett was the right choice for her to Who do you think would be? Yeah, who would be the right choice? All right, let's see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the daughter. I thought that the choice for the daughter was a good choice. Yeah, I agree. I don't care about Kate Blanchett one way or another. Really? I, I just don't care. I, I mean, I don't dislike her. Well, I love her she, enough for both of us. So. <laughs> Although, for a minute, I did think they were going to get Sandra Bullock to play her. And I think that could work. Yeah. Oh, she said... Emma Thompson. Oh, that's a good one. That would be good. All right, so your choice was approved. I would accept <laughs> that. I also love that. <laughs> what about you, Margaret? So you would recommend the audio book. What about the movie? Um, like Beth said, it, I kept on expecting things to happen, and they didn't, so... Uh, you were kind of like, when's it going to end? Very <laughs> like, if it's on, you watch it, maybe. But if something else is on, you switch the channel. Yeah. And it's it is different. on Hulu. So you can also watch it there. Oh. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> if you have a Hulu <laughs> subscribe. Um, anything else? Any burning questions anybody else has? Um, I had some recommendations. I did this last time. We talked about books that if you enjoyed this and you were looking for something similar, you could reach out to. So there's Dear Committee Members by Julie Schumer, which is also an epistolary novel. So if you really love the format of this book, if you thought it was easy to read, it was fun, it was approachable, that would be a good choice for you. The Pull of the Moon by Elizabeth Berg has a very similar story. It focuses on mother-daughter relationships. So if that aspect of the story was appealing to you, then maybe it would be a good fit. And if you liked it, the last one is Today Will Be Different, which is the other book by Maria Simple. And these are all books that we have here at the library that you can check out. So if you enjoyed this book, Watchers, and you wanted to engage with more material like it, those are options for you. And we'll post them in the comments below in case you didn't get all that and you didn't want to write it all down. Completely fair. We, <laughs> we'll, just, we'll post it in the link. Um, and next time, uh, it's going to be September 22nd, we'll be doing Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradner. Um, I picked it because September is uh, banned books. Um, and so we want to celebrate the right to read <laughs> um, by choosing a book about burning books. <laughs> and if you don't want to read, but you do want to look at Michael B. Jordan, <laughs> which is a good alternative. 
Um, but yes, we actually both got the, the Michael B. Jordan version of Fahrenheit 451, yes, as well as the 1960, 1966 with uh, Oscar Werner, Julie Christie, Sarah Cusack. Or if it's related to John. Maybe. I love John Cusack. I love everyone, right. apparently. Let's just pretend he is. <laughs> or she's Sarah. 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 A gender neutral Sarah. name. Yeah. But anyway, so you can watch either either or both of the movies. We have extra copies of all of the titles. So feel free to join in with us next September. Yep. See you guys then. I guess this September. I don't know why. <laughs> it's been a long year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and so we thank you all for joining us. And I hope everybody had a good time. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Margaret. Bye, Bye Mary Frances. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>